Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Dan Durbin. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. The Krypton Report podcast is dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl, and the planet Krypton. We discuss movies, TV, game, comics, and all things DC. So join me, Tyler, with my co-host James and Janine. New Year. Because technically this is the first official recording of the Krypton Report for the year 2022. How are you doing, James? Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, must say. Uh, so far, New Year's going fairly well. I feel like it's been like well, but also weird. Because the temperature dropped like 30 degrees and we got snow. And I don't know how you guys are up there in a little northerner part of Ohio than I am, but we actually had a snow day today. Um, oh, wow. No, um, I don't really have uh, a whole lot of snow. on. It, it just seemed like it was uh, one of those excuses where they're just like, you know what? They can just do a remote learning day. Let's just stay home. Well, I heard some other, uh, some other, um, closed down for extra. Week. I don't know if it's, if it has anything to do with rising numbers or what, um, uh, my kids at school, so no, that's closed for next. Wow. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I know, James, you haven't been feeling too good. Just. Well, I'm feeling better now. So uh, we wanted to try and do this. But early at the beginning of the week, I didn't have a I voice. Know. I said, hey, James. But I was like, <laughs> I was like Jay and he was silent Bob. He just kept nodding, which doesn't really work on a podcast. I'm like, James, talk. Yeah. He's like, see, you didn't even hear what I said. I would I, see the thing was I was talking. There's just nothing coming out. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we're just kind of chill. You know, we're taking it easy. We're having a good time. A lot of news to cover, catch up on. Um, man, it feels like we've done so much, but yet so little because so much has happened. So we're just going to kind of get into it. We're going to jump into the news first and then get crack a lack and looking back at 21. Damn. Let's see here. Let's pull out the old note taken pad here. Watch out. What I got here? What do I got? <clears throat> Ready? Here we go. Black Adam will reference the Suicide Squad in some way. Okay. All right. All right. Interesting. Interesting. I guess, I mean, it makes sense, you know, if Black Adam's. Because we're not sure, like, the time period of the film. Like, I have a, I, you know, you know, we're going to have ancient Egypt or whatever, ancient um, Kondok. And then is it going to move to modern time or is it going to move to, like, a close to modern time and then shift to modern time, you know, to kind of catch it up with the Shazam timeline? Um, so we don't know. We don't know. Nope. Not. Um, so I mean, the, the only thing we're pretty much guaranteed is that we're going to get, you know, multiple periods of time. So awesome, <laughs> you know. Uh, yes. So moving on to TV, Thanagarians are going to be in Naomi. Um, not Hawkman per se but just Thanagarians, proper Thanagarians. So that's cool. You know, padding. Yeah, that'll be sweet. And, and then they can uh, back door and talk about the Thanagarian Kryptonian war so we can tie Krypton back into things because Lord knows we keep trying to find ways to bring that show into the fold. Uh, yeah. yeah. They, they end on, they end on brand, brand Thanagarians flying through the air. Like, we were like, awesome. And pretty, then it was like. <laughs> pretty major cliffhanger. Like, and that's and it. And <laughs> nothing. Peace. 
right? That'll be awesome to see. Hopefully, hopefully they do some Thanagarian justice there. Uh, yeah. They, they've had some interesting stories that I've seen. I know in the comics they're heavily convoluted. I heard the last Hawkman series um, kind of s- supposed to straighten some stuff out a mm. little. What I heard, um, it's, it's just so... It's, it's, it, it just keeps changing. It's one, it's one of those where, you know, the reincarnation of souls... And then it's like, oh, but they're also alien. And you're just kind of like, okay, so what? What? And I mean, let's face it. Yeah, like there are different versions. Like there's alien versions. There's um, versions of beings on Earth and them being resurrected generations. Yeah. I was not a huge fan of the... Hawkman and Shira that we got on uh, Legends, um, especially Hawkman. He he really wasn't um, doing it for me, so we'll just leave it there and we'll keep moving. Awesome. So the Batman was on the current issue of Empire Magazine. That's pretty awesome. A lot of good stuff coming up for that. One thing we saw is image of Catwoman and see her and. Very much almost looks like she has flaws. Which, why not? Like, you know, we don't we don't have to go the whole. Like, it's just kind of funny because, like, we see how her mask is kind of like a ski mask that kind of looks like a cat, kind of like the way they did the Selena Kyle goggles in The Dark Knight Rises to try to make her look like Catwoman, but not. I'm like, just come on, it's 2022, just do it. But. Here's some weird stuff, okay? So I guess Michael Shannon will be General Zod in the Flash movie. And Feora will be back in the Flash movie. And did you know that Ezra Miller will be in the Flash movie? Did you know that as the Flash? <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard they might have. I heard they were thinking about putting him in the Flash movie. Um, but, you know, that that's a big announcement about, oh, add it to the Flash movie, add it to the Flash movie. And I'm just like, okay, you know, to me that means it could be something as simple as he's running through Earths or it shows something about the traveling. And I mean, I'm just going to say this right now. I'm not even addressing rumors on anything. There's too much rumor crap speculation going on. I'm not addressing. I'm not going to take my time on here to dissect. I mean, if they're going to be in it, you know, if if Michael Shannon's going to be in it, that's going to be, that'll be great. Um. If it's a Zod, he was fantastic, you know, um, still one of the best villains. He's like number two. And, and, um, you know, it would be great to see some more of him, uh, in what past. We're going to see. Oh, I. Come the Flash. I agree, you know, and like there's, like I said, there's these rumors about how the Flash movie is going to undo the whole Snyderverse stuff or erase Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill. I'm not even talking on that. Like, I'm just, whatever. Well, I'm not even going down that rabbit hole. Well, at, like, Yeah. Well, at this point, we that's all we hear, you know. It's just rumor. I mean, at this point, we can't put it past uh, Warner Brothers to want to do that. Uh, as ridiculous as it may be, we just can't, just can't put it past them that, that they would still be operating so petty like my, my, unfortunately it's very hard to classify and just say Warner Brothers because Warner Brothers is a company that's been changing people in and out so it's kind of like and with all the media changing who controls what stuff it gets so hard to figure out who's really in charge of why something is what it is you know um, yeah well, that's the that's the really crazy thing about it. Like, as many changes as has happened over at Warner Brothers over the last hand, like, how is it still operating on this level where where it seems like executives are are being petty 
about what what fans want to see and and what is done better for them um, in regards to the DC films and and Zack Snyder's Justice League it's I mean we all know that given the time it's not what it it's not exactly what it was or what it would have been mm-hmm. but it's nice to see that he was given freedom to, to at least finish his be but the fact that it's so so well received, so widely popular. Uh, I mean, there's no way that some people in those positions that have changed. That there's no way that some of them aren't are are ignoring. Right. You know they're, what I mean? They're like, we, there's a way we can make money off this. Like, but anyways. So. Um. The next thing, <clears throat> I ran my Naomi poll about what Superman should be because we got like a picture of Superman in Naomi, um, and it's, it looks like it's Tyler's costume, um, but we don't actually see the actor who it is. And uh, out of the poll that I ran. Sixty-one percent of the people said Tyler. Thirty-nine percent said Brandon Routh. So, interesting thought, you know, of just what people are thinking about, what they're interested in, um, where that's concerned. Yeah. I I seen that behind the scene picture that you sent. I saw it a couple of different places. One, the one that you sent, I uh, zoomed in on. It's clearly like. No trunks, but I seen somebody post and it looked looked like trunks. I don't know. They altered it a little bit to make it look like Brandon Routh Superman. I mean, they probably did, you know, like yeah, with the way people have been, it would not surprise me one lickety split. So, um, and will we actually see a person, or will it be kind of like they did Superman in season one of Supergirl, where it's just this vague presence in the background I don't know we'll see I'm I'm excited either way uh, let's see now this one this is perplexing Michael Keaton is added to the cast of Batgirl yeah I don't know what so we're having Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne, and we have uh, J.K. Simmons Gordon. Um, right? Is this like Batgirl, but it's also secretly like Batman Beyond? You know? Yeah, I've heard some rumors, some speculation. Uh, it's like he's picking Batgirl as a successor, kind of. Are they merging universes? What's the idea that's happening here? Are you just trying to confuse us and piss us off? Because that's where I'm right. getting right here. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It doesn't feel right. <laughs> are they just trying? Is, is it just nostalgia that they're trying to ride the coattails on the DC verse? Uh, because people were talking about how Ben Affleck was to to play Batman and continue being Batman and now you've got seven like can't be Bat can't be Batman unless you literally have just some kind of mentor guy like Bruce from Batman right. yeah. which in that case you don't have you don't have Bat. Right. So it doesn't make it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know. Um but what does in this world anymore, James? You know? I don't know. I don't know. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Uh uh I don't know. It's really it's really tough to say because there's 
Yep. That's we're just speaking yeah. in shorthand. Yep. And so <laughs> this is interesting. Um so the Batman will be on HBO Max forty five days after it's released. So the Batman will be on HBO Max in April. How do you feel about that, James? Well, I will still be seeing it on the big screen. And if it's fantastic and blows me away, um, you know, it's always the hope for any movies we go to see. Uh, it'll be great to be able to see it sooner or later. I, I agree. Um, because, you know, okay, here's my thing. Um, awesome. I like the, the 45 day window. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. I like it. But my, my, my problem is then if you're doing this 45 day window thing, doesn't that, don't you worry about that cutting into like theatrical profit? Like, are people just going to be like, you know what? It'll, uh, it'll be there in a few weeks. Why go to the theater? Um, right. Well, I mean, I'm sure they've collected some data this year on the same day as, as, um, Mm -hmm. theater like they did last year, 2021. But I think that, um, I think that they, they are pressed about added revenue. Yeah. You know what I mean? Box off isn't box off the end all. And you know, might I add like things like COVID and stuff, it's still a thing. It's not what? it's not gone. What? <laughs> As like some people like to, to act like it is. What you talking about, James? Uh, uh I mean it's not going anywhere. It's, it's gonna be like the food, like cold, um, pneumonia, what have you. It's not going anywhere. You heard it here um, first from Doctor so, James. Yeah, uh, it. Some people are still going to be weary of going to theater, uh, and if I'm, they're 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 operating on on the added revenue stream of of their stream of the streaming services, like they they have to think in terms of as much as they can do because all of the studios now are doing the 45 day window, mm-hmm. you know, uh, with, with theater chains. So it, theaters are still getting some exclusivity for a while. So that way they can make money. But I know, just, I, that means just the studio, they, they develop these streaming services for a reason and this is part of it. It just makes me wonder because I'm like, there's stuff that I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to the theater and then I'm like, you know what? It'll be streaming here soon and uh, I don't need to go to the theater for that, but whatever. Uh, well, you know, I mean, I've got we've got seven kids here. There's absolutely no way that the theater is going to be a viable option uh, very often for, uh, for us as a group. Right. More like a date night option. Um, so getting these movies uh, on streaming services will be a lot better. One, we get to be able to see them quicker because we're not going to go out to the theater as often. Um, it's like Encanto. Uh, on Disney yeah, that Plus, was great. Which is amazing. Really, it was awesome. It's great. It's fantastic. I loved it. Um, uh, you know, we can put that on and, and all of us can sit down. We can have a night with the kids. You know, I, I've spent, I've spent money on, you know, sound bars and speakers and, and, you know, bl- uh, Blu-ray players and, Big screen TVs for and a just reason. Shove, just jacking yourself <laughs> into the TV itself, like the Matrix, like Chica. right? So, yeah, I agree. Um, speaking of that, we got a trailer to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Which one? 
Uh, Peacemaker, about. duh. What else would there be? I expect that. <laughs> no, nah, like, I'm not going to break down the Peacemaker trailer, but it, you know, the thing was, it's just another, um, what you think you're going to get from this trailer of the show, because the show's coming out here soon. And, I mean, like I've said before, if it wasn't John Cena, I wouldn't be as interested. But it's John Cena's likability that makes me interested. I know that you had one little problem yeah, with the trailer uh, um, about the scene where he's making uh, comments about Wonder Woman and everything. You were like, look at this. What are they doing? <laughs> well, the thing I think, like, I entirely find it plausible that somebody, um, and and this, for one, this character is only this character in the show. Uh, certainly not portrayed this way in the yeah, comics, this is this is the, uh, in the least that's what makes it interesting about arguing guns like movies and comic book films is yeah it's based on a comic but he's not really doing the characters he's kind of just making his own thing up using these characters names um you know so which in a, in and of itself can be somewhat problematic we're going, we, we are wanting to see some characters. Yeah. I mean, just uh, like the whole Idris Elba thing, like they didn't know who he was filming the movie. You know, he was supposed to be a dead shot replacement. And then they were like, maybe he's going to be vigilante, bronze tiger, uh, blood sport. So, I mean, he's playing this character and they're filming, but yet he doesn't exactly know who he is. Yeah. Um, and and it's totally plausible for you know you were talking about the scene that I, or the, the scene that I sent you um, about Peacemaker and somebody they ask him if he knows Wonder Woman. He says yeah I know one I know Wonder Woman she spent an entire party I have to cross to a class classroom full of children these kids look like third yep. fourth graders yep um, and a parents all like. <gasps> He's like, what? I said effing. Like, like that was the that was the problem. You know, totally plausible character. How, especially being written by James Gunn, how that character react and people react or people act in general, talking talking crap. Mm-hmm. You know, but I don't know. It's 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 very disrespectful towards the character of Wonder Woman. Um, that now portrayed, um, now Wonder Woman is being portrayed as the the woman who has Flash fall on her chest because that's the way the the DC people want it. The that that the theatrical version of Justice League is canon. So get Wonder Woman who's got Flash falling on her chest. Got Wonder Woman. Who his ass is always in focus um, in the in Josh shots. Uh, um, you know, being portrayed the way she was uh, in some parts of Wonder Woman 1984 and now this. Like, there's, there's, almost, there's almost a disrespect going on towards these characters. And is it, is it just misogyny that, and, one, and Wonder Woman being a popular hero or is it because Gal Gadot <coughs> excuse me uh, part of me being sick or is it because Gal Gadot was cast in in uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League and that's how she became Wonder Woman is it is it that petty I don't I mean you know I don't know. I mean, I can get it from the peacemaker side just because it's just this, it's like a jock dude bragging about the hot chick. You know, like, oh yeah, man, she was totally checking me out. It's, you know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, I can absolutely see that being the, the character and as written by James Gunn in, in the first yeah. place and being portrayed the way he is. So it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It's the other stuff you mentioned that I can really be like, yeah, that, that, uh, kind of bothers me more like just where they're trying to pull her down to being 
a, a sex object more than the character that she is and should be. Um, but yeah, I mean the the whole him saying stuff didn't really bother me just because I'm like, I yeah, I just take it as like that dumb jock dude who's trying to brag about. And it's not like she's in it, so it's not like there's gal in it um, doing the scene or anything. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first time I saw it, the first time I watched the trailer, I laughed. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's funny. Like, um, you know, he, he's, I could see him saying that. I could see him, you know, and then you got this character totally oblivious saying this type of stuff in front of children. Oh, yeah, it's, it's trash humor. I get it. You know, it's funny. Um, but I also, uh, but then after that, you just kind of think about what they've done to the character of Wonder Woman. And Absolutely. that's when it starts to be yeah. like, hmm, you wonder if these people are taking their their IP seriously at all anymore. I don't know. Or if it's or if it's all or if it's just trying to be this ridiculous tone you, for everything movie. Give us a job. Give us a, but that's you know. Maker. Now, what's this other trailer you mentioned? Uh, the Batman trailer. Oh, you mean the trailer that dropped out of nowhere that no one knew what was going on, and all of a sudden there it was? Like on Christmas Day like, or whatever? After. Yeah. It was like a late Christmas gift to us. Like the 27th, right. I think it was. Um, it just appeared out of nowhere. I was like, what? It was like, a, it was like on a Monday. Yeah, the, the Bat and the Cat trailer. Um. You know, I'm not going to spend all the time breaking it down scene by scene, but I will say, first of all, I like this trailer a lot. Um, Because the other two trailers I felt like was more about visual mood and language. And this actually makes me feel like I understand what the dialogue is going to sound like, how the characters are going to talk and interact. Um, So this is, I don't want another trailer after this. I'm good. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard a lot of that. I'm I'm also good myself in that respect. Um, the the first Fandom trailer was great. It just, um, and you know, one thing that hasn't changed is the aesthetic of the um, like that does not have me excited in the least. Um, that's part of what's held it back for me since the beginning. Um, and then the next trailer was a little, a little more, a, a little less lackluster, um, and it didn't get me any more excited at all for for the bat. Uh, but this trailer, um, the idea of Bruce be, having been back in town for two years and he's still a billionaire. Um, the idea of that being a story point, story element. Um, some of the visuals that that they've shot in this in this movie, um, the Batmobile flipping car, the, the camera going with it, uh, the camera like at the back of the Batmobile when it slides, uh, him coming off the building, the way the camera is almost down his back as he kind of takes the dive off the front. Um, so there, there's some elements to this trailer, like um, him gliding through the streets, but actually just like, just like flying, like zipping the streets, less like gliding like the Dark Knight, um, and, and a lot more controlled. Um, uh, the the scenes of him fighting multiple people with weapons, uh, the large explosion, and focusing on him dropping down and just landing on his feet. Um, there's a there's so many actual like comic book elements that I'm starting to feel from this movie. So in in my opinion, it's like. They've got this aesthetic that's almost pretty in real world, but hopefully there's like room to build and develop that aesthetic to be a little more something we would recognize as comic book. But the feel of it, 
the things that Batman is doing and, and like Catwoman and the way she's jumping off the building, the, the cats she has, her claws and stuff. Um, there, there's a real comic book feel that I'm starting to get from this trailer. And I'm hoping that's the case because I would love it to be more, because we've discussed this about how the Dark Knight trilogy is some of the worst and some of the, or some of the best and some of the worst things to happen to comic book films and especially Batman and DC. Um, and I, I, I just hope, I, like I said, I'm getting this comic feel mm-hmm. from it, and I'm hoping that's real. I'm hoping that that's going to be the case where, because we suspend, we, we, we're already going in to suspend this on a, 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 on a character, the man who can do all this stuff that is impossible. Now, and, he, and he's a man without power, does all this stuff possible. Um, so like pulling back on having to explain everything, you know, once you explain that you, once you explain away everything, you don't have to suspend your discipline. We're we're already going in for that. You don't have to explain things Mm -hmm. away. Um, so I'm hoping that still that, that it continues what I'm getting from this trail, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, My thing, it gives me a little bit of the feels of like Batman Begins and Batman 89 where there was this color palette, this tone, this visual that was, it's real, but still has somewhat of a tweaked on reality feel um, that I feel like the Dark Knight abandoned when we got there compared to Batman Begins. Oh, entirely. Um, And so that... And I'm hoping that this goes the other way. And so, with you the, know, that we get more of that comic feel as it was, as, as it would yeah. continue. The only thing. I mean, we, the scenes where he's getting shot in, in the hallway and just so. He's getting shot by automatic weapons. The bullets are bouncing off. Like, that's. There's absolutely no way that Nolan's Batman, his armor, would have done that. And this armor doesn't appear that it would be entirely that bulletproof but it is and that's what i mean is you're suspending disbelief that it's it's like ben affleck's it looks more like a a, a rubber suit but it's it's heavily mm-hmm. armored and get that from batman in the comic books it's it's different layers of armor but it's so light and flexible that he's able to do the things he does you know what I mean? There's it's two things that don't wouldn't necessarily work: heavily armored and being able to the way he does. But that's what you that's what you're you're suspending your disbelief on, and that's kind of what I'm getting from some of the scenes with the bat suit and and the fighting in this in this trailer. The thing like you talk about, like I'm excited for it. I like the idea of like a really good Batman detective story. Um, and a, and a world in a Gotham that feels gothic and big. Um, the only thing, like, the suit is not 100% like, oh, it's the greatest Batman suit. It has its moments. It looks good in certain ways. It looks like somebody blended the Gotham by Gaslight and the Noel or the Bromejo Batman suit together. Um, but it's also, like, it gives you somewhere to go moving forward so that you can kind of keep refining and tweaking it. The Riddler's outfit thing is the one that I'm still just like, really? This whole thing? Um, Even Solomon was like, I don't like the look of the Riddler, Daddy. It doesn't make sense. (laughs) I'm like, all right. Heard it from the, you know, soon-to-be seven-year-old. So. Right. But other than that, like, I'm I'm on board with everything. Like, I'm I'm good. The only thing I could say is I would have loved if they just straight up in this movie would have... Harvey Dent so we could have another film of just like Harvey Dent and then like in a third movie if we want to do Two-Face so that we have this character there build it instead of right. trying to introduce Harvey and Two-Face and everything at the same time like how about just yeah. give me Harvey moving forward yeah I honestly you know at the studios and, and stuff story writers 
movies and stuff. They're stuck in this, in this three movie, this trilogy thing, you know, where where that's all you get out of character. And I mean, that's not the case. You got five Craig James Bond films. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Why can't we have five Batman films as long as there's tell and there's people who are able to write it? Um, I, I don't think we should be limited to, to three, especially it's, it's too I, I mean, and that's the thing, um, you know, you bring up, I think bringing up Craig James Bond is the best because he had five films. And if you look at how each film kind of added more to him being James Bond. You know, like it was a build up to him being like having the car, the gadget, the team, everything that when you think of Bond was there by the time we got to um, Spectre. I think Spectre is when it's officially like he kind of gets it in Skyfall, but then you have that at the end of Skyfall is where you actually get the new M with Money Penny, like her officially being like as Money Penny. So when you go into Spectre right. and Spectre is probably the weakest of, of his films. So that's a, that's a whole other conversation. Um, but then at the end of Spectre, it's kind of like into the la- the most recent film, No Time to Die. It's kind of like almost like a deconstruction of Bond. So you have this rise and fall arc of his Bond. And you could do that with Batman. You could do that with a continual through storyline. Like you don't have to be. And by the third film, he's this, you know. You could do a, a build of the character. Um you just have to have people who are willing to do it, you know, continue with the role. And that's why they always try to get people who are a little younger or un, or more unknowns. I mean, absolutely. because they're like, oh, you need this. Right. I mean, absolutely. I mean, hell, look at Tom Cruise in oh, Mission dude, Impossible. <laughs> you know what I mean? One, two, three, four. Like, he goes up and then, and then like, he's, uh, he's torn down and he's made to be the enemy. It's it's very easy to to generate this rise fall on his character. His entire history is a rise and fall. Yeah, where people don't know what to make of him, and picking himself back up. I mean, Twenty six you know? years for Tom Cruise doing Mission Impossible movies. He right. was supposed to end with Ghost um, Protocol, but then he's like, you know what? <sighs> Rogue Nation, and you know what? Fallout. We're just- we're just going to, you know, we're, we're going to keep it going. I like this. So, <laughs> yeah, but well, there's more Batman to talk to come down the ray. We got, so, I mean, yeah, this, this trailer, I, I know last time the trailer came out, I wasn't, I was like, this isn't as, uh, as good. It's not as, it's just not exciting. It's not bringing, you know, it's not doing it, but like, We've got this set, uh, the stationary camera, got uh, a very good focus on the flow of the action. It looked really good. Um, Like I said, there's a lot of comic book elements coming through. Um, You know, some of the Batman should be getting, and that's starting to come through. I hope, I hope it comes through even more in the movie. this trailer got me a little more excited for for the Batman because I wasn't. So it is job and I'm hoping that it is just it is just a, a, a building, you know, starting ground so that way we can get more and 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 more comic bookness coming from. And we'll just put a pen in it there because we have more discussions on Batman you know, building up to the release of that film, but let's talk about Superman and Supergirl and the whole super family and what we got in 2021. We're going to kick it off here with a little, uh, shout out to new friends that we have made this year. We made some, we made some quite some, uh, fun new friends this year, James here at the podcast. You know, we, um, we got shout outs to Zach Benz over at the Daily Planet, the Geek of Steel, Luke Bug, Anthony Desiato, host of Digging for Kryptonite, our friend Kelly Getner over at 
um, the Phoenix Sisters cosplay. Mr. Nate McKenzie over at the Superman the Animated Series podcast. Rachel over on Supergirl Radio. And we've had some great episodes this year. I mean, some some of the highlights that we had, I just want to, you know, talk about. Uh, finally got Zach Moore on here from Always Hold on a Smallville. We got to talk to Michael Bailey, big time Superman fan. Uh, Andy DiGenova, we just recently did from Holy Batcast. I got to talk to Cinema Blend's own Sean O'Connell. And we we interviewed Mark Wade. And then, of course, I got to interview George Newbern and talk to Superman himself. So it's been, it was a good year, I'd say. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I agree. It's a highlight. I didn't get to join you on on a, a few of those. Some of them. But, uh, you know, some good lessons. Things happen, people. Like near. I, try, I always try yeah. to get James, but, you know, life. Yeah, it, it's been a great, it's been a pretty crazy uh, year. And honestly, the last five months, you know, in the house and, and then uh, into the house here and then the baby was born and then oh my god we had to have spent October, November and December sick that's how it feels I so, feel like as soon as one of us is better <laughs> like someone else someone else is getting sick and it's just like one of those like as soon as you hear a cough you're like putting it down attack you slice all you start coughing you're just gonna get sprayed yeah, you know what I'll be in the bedroom see you in a week <laughs> right. So let's talk about we'll kind of do this like in re- descending order, I guess. Or, but you know, one of my favorite things are the McFarlane figures. You know, we've got quite a few Superman McFarlane figures um, this year, and some of them might have come out last. Year. I'm not sure, a hundred percent. I was trying to do my research, but I just had some to to talk about, but um. You know, the one the one thing is we haven't got a Supergirl McFarlane figure yet. It's been released. And another thing is some of them I'm getting a little confused on because if I go to McFarlane's website, it says for pre-order, but I have one sitting on my shelf or I've seen them in Target. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, right. uh, we kicked off the year with the Red Sun, I think was this past year. Yeah, I think it came out like, Early. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It was. So McFarland, McFarland's toys is his DC line. Um, it might have started 2020, but I really think it kicked off heavily in 2021. Oh, it just um, especially after his, especially after Zack Snyder Justice. I feel um, like he- yeah, it just kept building because it, it kicked off. You know, the first one I got was the Superman Action Comics 1000 figure. Um, and then it's just kind of built. And, yeah, earlier this year I got the Red Sun Superman. So that had to have come out maybe end of 2020, early 2021, um, that figure, which is a really great figure. Um, the sculpt is good and the face is slightly different in it. Uh the black suit animated series Superman came out. I have not got that one yet. Um, the me neither. I have Red Sun. The Superman Death Metal figure came out that my wife surprised me and got me because she's amazing. It's the most like stark different Superman figure when you look at my collection. No cape. Black pants, gray arm, chains wrapped around him. It's like, yeah. Yeah. The Omega effect in his arm, yeah. chain, the long yep. hair. He definitely pops out. It's like, oh, okay. That one's, that one's different. Uh, definitely a metal Superman. <laughs> we got the... Uh, Almost expect him to have a hand that's throwing up the <laughs> exactly. horn. That's what's missing. <laughs> Like, where, where's that one, McFarlane? Um, I got the Superman Doomsday um, 
set where it's the Batman Doomsday figure, which the Superman figure is pretty much the same as the Action 1000. Just his got a different uh, face sculpt on him. But that's a pretty awesome set. Um, the They just at the end of the year released the Lex Luthor where he's wearing like the Superman suit that he created during Rebirth, but he's like got the, um, what do you call it, the dark side like face where he was Lord Luther. Um, I'm drawing a blank on with the Emperor. Emperor uh, X, so. Yeah, he was, he was the, he ended up being the, um, what was it, the God of Apocalypse? It's, he was the ruler on Apocalypse at the end of the dark, at the, at the end of Dark yeah. Side. Of the I haven't got that one yet. It's on my wish list, but that was one that was released. And that he's, since he is wearing the Superman shield in that, and he was being quote unquote Superman trying to be during the rebirth, I thought I'd mention that. Yeah. I want, I wanted that because they did that before in the, um, um, Mattel line when it was when it went from the red box to the yeah. box and they had a, a build a fig and Lex yep. was the build a fig so like you would have to get a whole bunch of other figures just to make Lex out I didn't I that was right there that. at the end when Mattel was ending because I feel like a lot of those figures in that whole line kind of got lost um, the only figures I think I got from that line was I got Shazam because I found it like clearance at Walmart, and I got the Superman Kingdom Come that they did for that line, and I think that was it. In the whole blue, no, I take that back. I got a couple more, but they were ones I bought for Solomon to do the build a figure for Killer Croc. Um, so I, so I have a. I was gonna say you got Solo the Red Hood yeah. one. Yep, Remember he got that. that for Christmas, but that's a, that's his figure. Um, but yeah, so I have Katana, uh, and I have uh, a, a really cool Batman, like a blue and gray Batman. That was all part of that f- to for the for the lizard, should I say, or Killer Croc? Sorry, mm. he loves anything reptilian. Go figure. And then recently. We had the Rebirth Superman figure that just came out, and I found that um, at GameStop, and they had it on sale. Plus, I had my five dollar coupon, so I got it for like ten bucks. And it's cool. It's the second Rebirth Superman figure I have. I like it because technically, as we've discussed, that is Superman Blue. Um, and now they just need to give me a reborn figure. I've seen like mock-ups of them, but I want a Superman reborn figure in 2022. And I want a Tyler Hecklin Superman figure in 2022. McFarlane. And then they gave us the Zack Snyder's Justice League, Henry Cavill Superman, the red and blue, which was a Target exclusive, and the black. I have red and blue. I have them both. I ordered them, but I did. I, but I did. Instead of that one, I was able to snag the gold label dark side armor. I don't have the that's what the I armor. Have. I have. I have labeled dark side the armor. The only the only um, Zack Snyder figures I have is I got Aquaman and I got Dark Side. And I have the Supermans. Um, I got the Wonder Woman in the gold armor because I found it for like, I got it for like five bucks at GameStop because it had already been clearance down to $9.99 and I had my $5 coupon. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I was like, okay. Right. Um, I got that back in the summer. But what's funny is I went to Walmart the other day and they had a, all these, like, I saw the DC boxes. It was all Zack Snyder Justice League figures, and they were all just Aquaman. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, all right. I really want to get the Flash, and, you know, I want to get them all. I want to get Flash and Batman. Um, but I just haven't yet. So, I mean, that... Yeah, I haven't been able to like it yet. That's, you know, and then they start doing the gold label stuff, and I didn't even realize they were doing that. Like, I need Steppenwolf. Um 
I'm I've too. seen him a couple of times at the store, but yeah, I need him. And I'm not doing this whole like gray paint thing. I'm I'm gonna have him. I'm gonna have him. Uh, I'm gonna have the the Snyder stepping, standing on the head of uh, ju- the the studio cut stepping. Well, I mean, at least that sucks because that was a build a figure. That thing's hard to find. You know, like. I have like I think his leg or like I have some body piece of him. I mean, well, last year one one thing that I did and I sent you guys the message. Um, I found a complete set of Justice League, um, multiverse figures from back when it was Red Box when the 2017 studio came out. So I was able to get the entire set, and I took out all the pieces, and I put stuff. That's right. You did. I need a picture of that. Send me a picture of that. I want to see, because I'm curious about something. Um, I remember that now. Man, I'm getting old. But the only ones I got was I, so from that, I should have bought Superman, because I didn't get Superman from Justice League. Because he was like the same figure as Man of Steel, just they colored him a little darker. Which is ironic because I feel like his suit in Justice League Studio Cut is actually brighter than his Man of Steel, but or not Man of Steel, his BBS suit. But it's it's the same figure as BBS, just darker blue. Um, and then I didn't buy Aquaman. I wanted to, but I. I had bought Aquaman from BVS, which is the most random figure ever because he's, why do they even make merchandise for Aquaman for BVS is beyond me. Um, but I, I bought Flash and then I bought the Batman. I found Batman discounted at Walmart for $5 with the armor, um, the end of the movie's armor. And then I got the yeah. Cyborg. Um, I found him on clearance at Walmart real cheap. It was the face shield cyborg, which is technically a Zack Snyder cyborg because that's the only time you see him with the face shield. Um, so that was the cyborg that I had for the Justice League. And they're on my shelf. So good time for figures. That's what we're saying. We're 30-year-old men who mm. like collecting action figures. But that's cool. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll jump over now to movies. What was Superman in in the movies? Well, we got the announcement of the J.J. Abrams Superman produced film and whatever that's going to be. We haven't heard anything about it since. Um, we don't know what it's going to be, really. I'm just going to leave it at that, honestly, because it's been speculative. And we got the... Uh, Michael B. Jordan produced, maybe now starred in, maybe Val Zod film for HBO Max that was announced. Yeah, we, we got the announcement that he was going to be working on something. Then we got the official thing saying from him, from I'm pretty sure from Michael in fact, going to Val Zod. And that's about the last Yeah, it wasn't even mentioned at Fandome. So I, I expect to see that in like 2023 or four, you know. Um, so I'm not holding my breath. As, as an active in production um, Superman uh, content, I would say that's probably, and I'm not saying like like filming or nothing, but pre-production phase, even in pre-production phase. The Valzad is definitely high point of the one I'm mostly. Seeing. It'll be it'll be interesting to see his story and where they go with him because um, he's one of those characters like I want to read more about, but he's it's harder to find his stories. Um, yeah, well, I mean, he just came into being in the New Fifty Two in Earth Two, um, and I find it unlikely that they are going to do the Earth storyline uh for him in the show um because it's actually pretty uh it 
it's a, the Earth Two storyline is actually it's not about one specific person; it's about all of the heroes on Earth mm-hmm. Two. So, um, I mean, it, it's kind of like you could think of Injustice, where it encompasses the, the DC universe, it encompasses DC universe on the Earth Two side. It's a very expansive; it covers the entire globe. Apocalypse and Dark Side and theories involved. It's, it's pretty, pretty major storyline um, for the whole thing. So, yeah, it, I mean it is, and you know, in that story, like Superman, the regular Superman of Earth Two is killed. Him, Wonder Woman, and Batman are killed, like at the very beginning from Dark Side, and that's part of the whole thread of what Dark Side's doing in the New Fifty Two. So. There's that. Now you said yeah, injustice. And they end up sacrificing themselves, it protecting their earth from dark side for a, a little while. Why did you say injustice? You mean that movie that came out that sucked? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that I'm not going to sugarcoat it, people. I was not happy with that. You go back and listen to James and I's idea of what that movie should have been and how it could have been a two parter and really been something, and you'll understand what we're saying. Okay. All I'm saying is that movie sucked. And I, I got excited for it. I pre-ordered like the 4K version because it was like a couple bucks more than the regular Blu-ray. And I'll probably never watch it again. Yeah, that's that's really sad. Um, such a fantastic um, comic book. Uh, a really good video game um, story that it's that it's developed. And you know, they just they just made it, it's crazy, you know, how how soon history can repeat itself by just trying to pack too much story into one movie and and it doesn't work out. And, and it's crazy because it's almost another Superman story. They did it before yep. yeah. I mean yeah, well, like I said, go back and listen to that. We're not happy with that film. I don't think anybody liked that movie. Um, was, There's very little. Of- yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't really think of anything other than a couple of minutes at the beginning. And that's over. And then the big high note for Superman of 2021 was, of course, Zack Snyder's Justice League, where we got to see Henry Cavill back in the true performance that he was given. Um, his very minimal dialogue in that movie. Very minimal. I think that's why when he says not impressed, it's such a huge big deal because that's like one of his only lines. And we got the black suit. Which, I like the black suit, but I prefer the blue and red, to be honest with you. But, you know. But that was, you know, the the big movie of this year for Superman was, of course, um, Zack Snyder's Justice League. And we've talked about that in length, but it's just nice to see. And, we, and we're not done talking. Yeah, it'll, it'll probably never <laughs> be done talking about it. Um, so we're going to move over to TV. And at TV this year, we... Let's see, we had announcement-wise, we got the My Adventures with Superman, the animated series coming to HBO Max. That was announced, and we saw some artwork for it, and that was it. (laughs) There was nothing for it for fandom or anything, no release dates, uh, nothing. So that was announced. That's cool, you know, awesome. Uh, We got the HD releases um, of Smallville, the complete series, along with... Lois and Clark being brought to HBO Max with a high-def remaster, which looks awesome. And Superman the Animated Series got a Blu-ray release and is on HBO Max in higher quality, which was awesome. That all happened just in this past uh, October. Which... Yeah, very, very good month for Superman. Which doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Here we are in January. And it just feels like yesterday was October. And so regular television, looking back at, we had um, Titans season three, 
would solve probably the best version of Superboy ever. This J- Josh Orpin is Superboy. This is the Connor that I really, really like. Um, I, Live act. Absolutely. Um, There's a debate on on the Young Justice as the best Superboy ever. Well, Young Justice, if you look at it as a whole, <laughs> he has a great arc. And I think Absolutely. you can still kind of touch, I think, for, this isn't really spoilers, but I think for season four of Titans would be neat if they explore Superboy more and do kind of like the Jeff Johns where the Lex side started to take over Superboy and maybe let him start to get into the anger a little bit more and deal with um, how he's feeling as a as kind of this clone and... Um, you know, it'd be great to have an interaction or more conversation about Superman not being there. You could see some of that potentially coming out if if they were to further the storyline, develop season three of, of Genome yes. City, of him of him being a genome and, and kind of in a political aspect, see the other side coming or predominant if you had out in the public eye, I like that. I um, like the idea of, and be I like the idea of bringing out this character to where you actually flush him out to being having the powers of Superman with the brain of Lex Luthor, and really being like the boast of be- the best of both of those two. Yeah, and they did a really good job on, on that. Um, Joshua, or yeah, they, they're developing that, and I'm I loved it. I loved um, some of like the innocence of him. Yeah, I definitely see his his version of Superboy taking that route of of um, Jeff John Spin him being more like. So that's I just especially Titan being like by him. I would like to see a little bit more with him in Titans, and let's back off. Like it's Titans, not Dick Grayson. It's Titans, not Nightwing. Let's let's really back off the Dick Grayson. Like you've expanded his arc and done enough with him. Like I want him there, but don't try to make me this into a Batman styled show. With okay, how about we explore the other characters? Okay, Capiche? All right. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's so there's a couple of things I I, I want to say like. So Titans, I, I don't see why they, why the writers and everything kind of wanted this one foot in, one foot yeah. out thing. Like they've done so good of, with the costumes and, and half the time putting in the costumes, and some of its character development and, and character interactions. They've done really good with a lot of that, but then they also don't take that next step. And they just want to stay on the other side of the Scarecrow. Time for masks is over. Like, he had the Scarecrow mask. He never wore it. Um, uh, but one thing I do think is really good um, was how Jonathan Crane was there. And people were terrified of him. Even as Even as himself, out of costume, as soon as they knew Jonathan Crane, as soon as they knew Scarecrow, they fell in line because they're they're afraid of super villains. Um, and that's the way it should be. Like one the one villain should have the ability to bring the city almost to its knees, almost to its breaking point. Um, which I'm hoping is kind of something they're gonna do with the Riddler in the Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like that's what that's the point of the supervillains is is one person and their machination should be enough to like city, um, organized crime and all. Uh, so I think they did a really good job in that aspect. So they, they push it, push it. They, they go up to that line, but they don't, don't ever cross the line into what could actually make it a great show. Yep. They always, like you said, they, they pull back, um, Right when they get to like they get going, they're like, "Oh, this is so good, this is so good," and then it's like, <laughs> and 
and you're and you're like, right. really, guys, really? Um, so yeah. And speaking of Superboy, as of this recording, Young Justice season four is at its mid season. So we're gonna mention how they they killed Connor. I am not happy. They killed Connor in the first arc. Season. I am not happy. But there's hope from how they ended the mid-season with his soul, essence, energy, whatever. But it's worth mentioning that they killed Connor. Yeah. Um, I, I've... So we haven't really talked a whole lot about it. Nope, I'm we can't. We can't. really curious as to we what's... Can't. We, just, we just start yeah, crying. I know. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I, I don't... So the Legion was around. The Legion was around for a reason. Um, they never ever specify what the reason is um, or what they do. Like they were waiting for something. Something happens and then they spring into action. But you never see what they do. You never see they're there for or anything. So I don't like, I'm curious if something Superboy um, take him to future um protecting psyche so he survived um i mean we see the legion uh one more time but they're just there watching somebody i can't even remember where it was it's on the um, street yeah but they weren't they weren't involved like they were they were there watching over superboy and miss martian uh, waiting for something to happen on Mars, but they were involved in that arc. And then when they showed up again, they were not, they never involved. They have shown up since, um, in the three arcs, in two other arcs. Mm-hmm. So then, yeah, we get this, I don't know, like you said, soul, spirit, um, uh, life force, uh, astral projection, something um, that calls out for help and Zatanna. Yep. And so we're not done with Connor, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, I mean, because I, I was just like, I'm watching this like, are you serious? I should have known as soon as like, man, this is good stuff. I should have like, prepare for heartbreak, Tyler. Yeah, yeah. I remember when it happened, and and I and I, I I didn't spoil it for you or anything, but you knew something happened because I was like, "Oh my God, did you watch Young Justice?" I was like, "Not yet." You're in, like in the episode where he you're died. Like, okay, talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, I was like, I I'm not even going into it. Like, let me know when you watch it. <laughs> I did. I let you know. Um, yeah, the next thing it was like WTF? <laughs> they killed Connor. <laughs> I'm like, That's it. As soon as you were done, <laughs> James. Uh, um. So you know, speaking on uh, uh, on Connor, uh, uh, I have advised you to read his. Suicide, his time in Suicide Squad in the current run. So, um, I am, I am in my, uh, let's go well, Future State had two books, and I'm in, uh, the seventh, not the seventh issue, anniversary, not anniversary, annual issue <laughs> after issue six, and then I'll be doing issue seven through, I think, Nine or ten that's out. Um, but uh, I'm enjoying the... I'm, I'm really enjoying the Connor aspect of reading a Suicide Squad. Dope. Sounds good. And then um, we said goodbye to Supergirl this year. You know... Um, very mixed feelings about the end of that show. Um, you know, we talked about how it felt like it kind of 
the show was kind of limping at the end and has become more of uh how do you like yeah super friends and it just kind of went out without like it's kind of went out like it was gone you know like yeah it it went out with a whimper it's like all right guys Um, we're done you know we made it (laughs) um it didn't go out with the bang like and we talked about how it just it felt like the show had just become so much about everyone else other than the characters that they were it was supergirl like it wasn't even really her show anymore um but you know it's kind of bittersweet because in some ways i was like i was sad to see it go because you know that's what kind of helped kick start this podcast and it become just kind of that in the background but at the same time it had become such a chore to watch uh especially in You know, it was just, the last season was just more and more of being more frustrated about just what are you guys doing um, with your characters, with your villains? You know, you set up Nixley to be this awesome villain and then it ends up being, she's fighting, uh, Kara's fighting Lex Luthor, you know? And it kind of, it kind of. Yeah, yeah, they set her up to be this big villain. They nerf her with the. A magic dampening uh, uh, device around her wrist. Yeah, for like the whole time she's there. So, yeah, and, and then and then in the final episode when they're fighting and they're fighting with fifth dimensional energy, they're still only using little arm. They're still using arm cannon, just blast at each other. And and, and I mean, Lex comes back into the picture. And it becomes like, oh, so it's basically Supergirl versus Lex Luthor. And then the big way they get rid of the villain and wrap it all up is by sending them to the Phantom Zone. Yeah, by by pulling a Justice. Smell that. That's yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> like, so wait, what you're telling me is you just send them to the Phantom Zone. Like, you couldn't have just done that from the get-go? Well, wasn't... And and when they escaped the Phantom Zone, wasn't the Phantom Zone stabilized? Um, wasn't it fractured and, and coming apart and yeah. stuff? and they didn't even play on that. Right? So, But they go back but to they don't it. Talk, like, they don't even, like, oh, no, Lex Luthor's a human going to the Phantom Zone. You know, Nixie's going back to the Phantom Zone. It was... Yeah, we'll just leave it. So, goodbye, Supergirl. We enjoyed you. Um, you know, I plan on doing a rewatch of the first season here soon. Um, I think it'll be very eye-opening to just kind of go back and see how it was. I mean, I've often gone back to elements of season two because that's when Superman first showed up and we did that big, you know, kind of Superman rewatch Um last year and um so it'll be uh, excuse me it'll be interesting to go back and just watch the whole thing again but uh, it'll probably be a while before i do that Uh, but i am going to go back and watch the first season yeah i would definitely like to watch the season again Uh, i really did enjoy melissa as uh ara as supergirl she She's, I, I love her trail throughout the entire show. She, she's great. She, she looked the part. She embodied the part. She was, she was awesome. And I hope, you know, they, they certainly didn't kill her. Yeah, that's unlike. <laughs> no, uh, I.E. Oliver. Um, so maybe in See her cameo again. Yes, she should, because I'm a continuity stickler. And it kills me that they didn't even address anything. I would love to see her pop up Superman and Lois in the next season. Yeah, just just one quick thing. Pop up. Oh, there she is. Um, Cousin Kara coming. The boys are graduating high school in two years. 
comes to their graduation. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to see her as Supergirl, but hell, even I'll that be would fine. Do. You know, just, <laughs> just film. Okay. I keep saying this is my new thing. If Zack Snyder can film an actor who's not on set with anyone else and then put them in the movie and make it as believable as Tig was in Army of the Dead, then just film Melissa in front of a green screen. Okay. Just give me some shots and put her in there for continuity's sake, okay? Which brings us to the, I think, the biggest Superman thing of the year was Superman and Lois, season one. Oh, fantastic I mean, amazing show. show. The, the flagship show that um, had. It's amazing to me, people who didn't, who were fans of Superman and didn't, like, watch it at first and then started to later, I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. I'm like, how are you going to be a fan of this character and not be excited to check it out? Um, I mean, this show is just, it's everything I... Well, you know, because it wasn't produced in 1978. No, yeah. You're right. <laughs> Should have thought about that one before I opened my mouth because, you know, anything with Superman after 1978 or some people may argue 83 um, or some people may argue 87... Um, doesn't count, doesn't exist. There is none. Um, right. <laughs> but you could hear us talking length about that show, but all I'm saying is that has been the highlight of just everything's filing on on cylinders. Like I'm excited for the next season and nervous, but. Well, as, as of four days from now, in the, in the premiere of season two. So we'll two. talk about that in an upcoming episode soon. Um, yeah, yeah, that's going to be awesome. we get to jump right back into that soon. So let's jump into some comics highlights. I, I tried to keep track of all the big Superman-based thing. But I know there's probably some that have slipped through the cracks. We had Superman and the Authority, which was good. A lot of people really loved Superman and the Authority. I liked it. Um, a lot of people really loved Grant Morrison writing Superman. And to me, it's kind of hit and miss. Um, but that's that's a discussion for another time. Yeah, I thought Superman in the was good. Um, it's it was it was good, and and I loved the way that they brought in like Humanite back as Superman villain. There's some really awesome things about it. This is really just a team building book issues of Superman bringing together the authority. Yeah. You're absolutely correct. Um, it, it was it was interesting in hearing some of like the history of uh, how that came to be has been cool. Um, so let's see here. We had the Super Sons uh, Legend, was it Legends of the Super Sons that came out the short run? That was fun. I just, little eight year old John. I think that was Adventures okay. of the Super Sons. Too many of the same words get thrown around. I, I forget people. I'm not. Oh, and there was uh, Challenge the of the one. Super Sons. Challenge. That's the one. <laughs> um, so that was a fun book. You know, eight year old. Which I. Pick up all was it eight, twelve year old Jonathan? It's just awesome and fun to be with. Um, you know, as much as I am enjoying the other big title of Superman, Son of Kal El. Technically, he's it's a Superman slash Superboy book where it is John. Um, I, I like John as a kid. You know, I like that aspect, and I hate that that's gone. To be completely honest. Yeah, it, it went it went too fast. It it absolutely it absolutely went away. Too they fast. they aged him um, up, you know, to be like seventeen, and then aged him up a little bit again to where he is now. Like, um, you know, one of the highlights of this year for us is we went and met Tom Welling, and we met Dan Jurgens together at a con in Michigan, mm-hmm. and you know, Dan Jurgens created John Kent. And I, I had him sign my Lois and Clark book where, you know, John Kent and them come to this earth and in the comics and everything. And, you know, I, I mentioned like, I, I miss that character and it's, you know, especially now that Solomon's about to turn seven, 
he even more is like that character that's in that book that I enjoyed reading. And um, I'm okay with them doing some sort of more of a story with Damien and John as kids where, you know, all you have to do is they get transported with the Legion or something or, and they're returned right to the exact moment they left, (laughs) you know, one of those type things where they can do all this and have these grand adventures or whatever. And I just think that there's that you, you've taken away the element that I loved of Superman as a father. Yes, he's still a father, but he's at that point now where his kid's moving on and he's not really raising his child anymore. Um, that element of him being the day in, day out dad trying to take care of a, you know, eight to 12 year old boy really was amazing in the character. And they've taken that from us. And that was something that I really connected to. Yeah. We, we didn't get to see, we didn't get to see him work his son develop his powers, to develop his, God has started to do things, and then he went off the world and came back, he was seven, he went to the future, he came back, 18, 19, 20, 21, 27, who knows? Yeah, like, just, just straight cutting out that fatherhood aspect, which was so fantastic, uh, during the And that's one thing in recent times that I've really not agreed with and been uh, been upset with, but you know, and that is what it is, you know? So. Yeah. I mean, the son of Kello. Yeah, it is. Oh, I mean, Tom Taylor's awesome. Uh, but yeah, it it's, they, they did cut out, they did cut out a lot of, a lot of potential elements each time. So crap. And let's see. Um, we had, and we're going to we'll come back around, so don't worry, people. The Superman vs. Lobo, that hasn't concluded yet. That's been an interesting read, and everyone knows how I feel that I'm not a huge Lobo fan at all. Um, we have the, I'm not talking about too much, it's not done, so it's hard to talk about. We have the Dark Knights, uh, Legend of the Dark Knights, or sorry, the Steel. Dark yeah, Knights I'm of Steel. Tied, and I'm getting tired because I have been up for like ever. <laughs> and that just started. Issue three just came out. I have to go pick it up. Um, so that's worth mentioning. I have. Yeah, I have it. I haven't read it yet. I really love issues one and two. I'm digging it. And we're going to be reviewing that here shortly. Um. Um, you know, that's, we're catching up on stuff. Like we've just been busy. The holidays take a lot, you know, as, as fathers, as husband, I am and James and his family. And, um, well, hopefully y'all are listening, coming back now, being with us during, uh, during the backs, catching up on comments here soon. On <laughs> things get stretched pretty thin and you know um sometimes like my comic shop keeps horrible hours (laughs) so trying to jump over there and get stuff can be a problem uh i think one of the biggest highlights of comic books has been the superman 78 book that launched this year um that it's been met with mainly all positive reviews i like it i'm enjoying it there's a few things i'm kind of i was kind of like eh um I didn't mind where, like, we're, what, two issues, one issue away from it being over? Um, I've liked it. I haven't loved it because I feel like, first of all, they're they're incorporating things I didn't like in Superman 2 because they really are just looking at the film canon in itself. And the other thing is, I was okay with Jarrell not coming back. I really didn't need that. I didn't mind him meeting Kryptonians in Candor and everything, but I really did not need Jarrell. But that's just me. Yeah. Um, well, the, the voices are written, written very well. Yes, yes, they are. 
they, it, they, they feel just like the characters. They sound just like the characters. The art works as being just likeness enough to know what that is, who that is, without feeling like you're going to get sued or have to pay likeness rights. Right. So it works, and that's been a, a pleasure of just being a good, solid Superman story that exists outside of everything else and also being a different flavor of Superman. I think the highlight of comics for me this year, though, has been the uh, Red and Blue Anthology books. Um, the six anthology books that we reviewed that I miss, I miss those. Like I miss getting those collections. Um, mm. yeah, I, I would say that there was a couple of those anthology books that were really good. Um, and some of them, uh, some of the stories that were, um, just a little, me, <laughs> uh, a little less, Great. I mean, I mean, they were everything, and it was pretty good. I don't think actually. I don't think we like, ever found one that we hated. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a. Or I don't, yeah, I don't found one that we hated that. Um, but we did certainly have some that we loved more than others. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think my, I think it's, it's tough for me to choose between Tom Taylor's or. Philip Kennedy Johnson writing last. Well, Philip Kennedy Johnson's got had more books, uh, more issues uh, for Superman this year than Tom Taylor. So I, I probably have Kennedy Johnson because I'm, I'm definitely uh, enjoying his run on action. Oh, yeah. And that's what we were saving for the last kind of highlight point of. <clears throat> Of the year. Well, you're well. Perfect segue, James. <laughs> it's like we planned it. <laughs> um, but no, in all seriousness, he, uh, we are, you know, being correct here that Action Comics with Philip Kennedy Johnson has been an amazing read. Um, it is probably what I love about it is even though we're on a different world, you know, is how it's the perfect way of putting real world issues and things that happen that we should discuss into a comic where I don't feel like I'm being force fed something, you know, uh, recent. Yeah. It's, 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 it's getting a message through without slapping you in the face with the message. You know, recently, uh, Philip, uh, has done some amazing interviews with our friends, uh, the last sons, I recommend listening to theirs first and then jumping over to the aspiring Kryptonians and listen to theirs um, because they take place at different times of where he was at writing the books. Well, I, I mean, you could listen to, could listen to aspiring Kryptonians, early like one. a good, uh, their early yeah. one back when his run first started and jump to last Sons and then, like and then last sons and then go back to the, the next one with the aspiring. And it's really great to just hear his his story as a, as a writer and what he's doing and accomplishing and his goal with these characters and with Mongol and with Superman. And, you know, um, I, I can't praise it enough of dealing with this, like the human trafficking element that is present without feeling like he's like we said, it's not beating us over the head with it. Um, and I very much look forward to the next phase and chapter in this story, as well as some of the stuff and ideas that he has, he's kind of teased for where he wants to take these characters um, and the super family down the line. Um, I will admit I am behind on a lot of my reading as far as Supergirl. She got that Tom Taylor run. Um, Tom I'm King. Jesus. I'm getting very tired. It's, it's hitting me people. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I've only read two issues of that, so, and I'm pretty positive there's six out right now of a 12 and issue. Because, um, you know, series. you and I have had these conversations where I'm not feeling as strong of a pull to go to the shop and get all my books 
And a lot of my stories, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm done. Like, I'll just wait for them to be on the, the app. Like, I'm paying for this app. And there's very few stories that I'm feeling the need to um, go and be a part of. And that's how I feel also a lot about reading Batman is, and like the Flash. I want to read these. But there's nothing that's drawn me to be there when they come out that I'll just wait till they're on the app. And yeah, which I've been kicking some ass um, this year so far, this month of um, reading the, the, the new, latest releases, the latest weekly releases on DC Universe, and jumping back to when these books began after your state and and catching up with what what's there um so you know on everything but kryptonians i'm six months behind but i don't care i'm paying for it and i've read like i've read like 40 comics it's awesome yeah. my my problem is i've had <laughs> two is when apple did their last update uh, and it's only the seventh <laughs> <laughs> my ipad is officially it's old like it's almost seven years old and it won't let me download like an older version of dc so the app will not work on my ipad so i oh that's, that's, and i you know i like reading it on that compared to my phone um and so i have to get on the website and sometimes that just gets to be a problem trying to use the website to read uh from a tablet because it's like Download the app. I'm like, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks a lot. Uh, but so that's kind of set me back a little bit because that just became such a problem. So I, I hate trying to read comics on my phone. You know, if I'm sitting on my computer, it's cool, like, um, to read. But that's 2021. I would say over all in all, it was a good year for Superman. Um, it was a great year. I mean, you can't really argue we had an, an – it's amazing how, in a way, much like 2016, we got both a new Henry Cavill Superman project and Tyler Hecklin. And then this year we got Tyler Hecklin and Henry Cavill again. Um, so yeah. it's kind of funny um, how that kind of works out. But any, any other final thoughts, James, before I get too tired to actually make sentences? Um, you know, no, I, I think, I think it, uh, looking back at 2021, everything. Super, yeah. It, last, last year was a really good year for Superman. And I, I hope, to, I hope to get to continue this momentum. You know, it's, it's going to slow down again, but. I think we're on an upswing. So hopefully we get some more great Superman content this year. Um, I, I, I think we will. I mean, we have season two coming. We have the continuation of Philip Kennedy Johnson's run. And we will see what else we get. You know, got, got, Philip Johnson, we've got some Tom Taylor writing um, moving forward. Uh, 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 Tom King's Supergirl isn't done yet. Uh, I, I'm very interested. You know, we we got so got so little of Connor. Moving forward from the new fifty two and then and then when rebirth happened, uh, you know he was in young justice, but was a strong best mm -hmm. point in that um so actually him being a primary character in the suicide squad is really suicide but it's um and it's very compelling what they're what they're trying to do because um, 
I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you one spoiler is because it's Suicide Squad. Amanda Waller in Future State saying that Connor super. Hmm. So he's got a he's got a, a Superman suit, Superman design for himself in the future. And you know how the uh, future state is like it's not set in stone that it's gonna happen, but it's a possible future. Which is and fun. the way that the stories have been developed in Batman, Superman and, and all the light characters is the stories are developing into possible being seen. So, very curious as to what's happening. Future States, when it's like, hey, here's all these stories that probably don't matter just because we had this in the works. We need to put it out there and we'll probably change everything. But here, buy it anyways. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, w- without you reading it, it's hard to hard to go into detail about it. Um, I just like what they've been doing Connor over there. It's it's good to see him getting some attention again. I've said this before. Brian had a great pitch. Uh, shout out to Brian. Man child of steel. Because we talked about Connor needs his own moniker. Connor needs to become uh, the Nightwing to Batman. Or the Nightwing to Superman. You know what I'm saying. He needs, to, he needs to be like right, Superman's right. name. And Brian said, wouldn't it be cool if his name was like Red Sun? Yeah. And, like, well, he's, you know, he, he's, he's the brother in arms. Exactly. You know, it's not, it's not his, it's not his son. Um, you know, he, he's definitely his brother in arms. Right. And I, I think that some Connor John stuff would have been, is, will be awesome to see at some point of like, He's like an uncle, but yet you're very close in age. And there's a lot of... Oh, man. Was it... You know, you say that. Wasn't it freaking heartbreaking? Yes. When, um, John was... Where's Uncle yes. Connor? Young and Justice. Superman had to try Clark to explain death to a child. To a two-year-old? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was amazingly done, and... I, uh, it, it hit hard just because I remember having, um, shout out to Nolan North delivering that dialogue so yes. well. I mean, we, we tried to meet him recently that we didn't get to, but it just reminds me when I had to explain death to Solomon, he was about two and a half, almost three. Um, uh, when my grandfather died and he was trying to, you know, trying to explain to him what was going on. Um, so, but we're going to put a pin in it. Been a good, good 2021. We look forward to 2022 and just remember. Look up in the sky. Do you like movies? Of course you do. Do you like comic book movies? Of course you do. Well, our Patreon is launched now. It's a dollar a month. That's all we ask. One dollar. A month to hear great content. And right now, one of the biggest things we're doing on our Patreon is movie commentaries. I am a movie person, and I love to talk about movie. So what we're doing is at least two movie commentaries a month. You'll hear the wonderful voice of my wife, Jania, more often, and other special shows. Check out our Patreon at kryptonreport.com slash Patreon. And all we ask is, hey, $1. It helps us keep the show on. We're not looking to get rich. We just help with the cost of doing this, and it helps a friend out. You loan a friend a dollar, you probably have a dollar lying around the house and change. So check out patreon.com slash Report. Sign up for the $1 a month and send us a message. You can be on the podcast. We can talk about something, anything you want to talk about. You can join us for a movie commentary if you want. So check it out. And if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. If you're enjoying this podcast, here's some of our favorite podcasts to check out. Digging for Kryptonite. The Aspiring Kryptonian, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Geek of Steel, The All-Star Super Fan Podcast, It All Comes Back to Superman, and Superboy Legacy. 
Supergirl Radio, and of course, always hold on to Smallville. Check all those out, enjoy those supercasts, and remember, keep listening. The Krypton Report is a Tears production. We thank you for listening and enjoying, and please support us on our Patreon account, our Tea Public store, and check out our social media. Always remember to look up in the sky.